Now finally, we might want to work a little bit with the actual labels. So just like with the point and the polygon symbology, if I go into my layer properties and click on the labels button, here's where I can start doing some very simple manipulation on how the actual labels are displayed. First, if I want the labels in this feature labeled, I have to make sure that this checkbox is highlighted or checked. And from the label field, I essentially have everything in my attribute table available to me to label on. And in this case, I want to label by name. Now, if I just click Apply, I'm just going to get a very standard 8-point aerial text symbol. And as we can see on my map, it's a little difficult to tease out given what's going on in the background. So I have a number of options. I can change the placement properties by clicking on Placement Properties. And this will just let me tell the label where I'd like to prioritize it on my map. So maybe because these are starting to sit a little bit off of Staten Island, I might want to change my location to something that works a little better. And click Apply again. And maybe those labels seem to work a little cleaner on my layout. Now I can start working on the actual label itself by simply changing the font here and the point size. But if I want more advanced options, I can click on the symbol button. And sometimes for these types of maps, I might find it useful to use some sort of a banner text. And I can start with one of the preloaded templates, select it, and just like I did with the previous symbology, I can click on the Properties button and start tweaking my text label from here. I can change all sorts of things, everything from the X and Y offset to the point size, the font size, work a little bit with the formatted text or advanced text. If I want to change from sort of that yellow background into something else, maybe that makes it stand out a little better, I again start working in the symbol selector. And we see over here in my preview window, I'm getting sort of a sneak peek at how this is going to draw my map. That looks pretty good. So I'll click OK, click OK. And from there, I can begin making my final tweaks as appropriate. Now, if the labels are still giving you some problems and you're not finding that working with the actual label properties is quite as flexible as you wish, remember that you can always convert them to annotation by right-clicking on the labeled layer and selecting Convert Labels to Annotation. Now in this case, we have some options. We can either store the annotation as an actual annotation feature class in a database, but in this case I'm just going to prefer to store it directly in the map. We can also create just the annotation for all the features or just the features in our current extent. And if I have overlapping labels that aren't appearing on my map, I can either choose to either label only 
things that I can actually see being labeled on my map, or I can unselect this box and have all the labels essentially available to me for every single feature, regardless of whether or not they overlap. Now when I click Convert, I'll see that now I have graphical representations of my labels that I can begin to reposition a bit better. and go from there. Now you may find also that when you're working in a map at this extent it might be helpful to see where the rest of your features are in relation to the area you're working. And a nice feature that's included is an overview window. If you go to window and then go to overview you'll see that you get this overview window that pops up now in this case it's actually grabbing the world topographic map layer so I'm getting a distorted view of my area and it's not helpful at this point so what I want to do is probably reset this window to reflect the actual extent for my New York borough boundaries and to do that I simply right click on the title go to properties and then pick the reference layer that I want to appear in my overview window. Click OK. And now we'll see all of New York City. And here's essentially my vicinity. So that's it. That sums up very simple and straightforward ways to change your symbology and to save it into your own style and just gives you a couple of clues on the number of ways that you can begin really manipulating your map to your liking.